Hi guys, great to see you this week. This week I've got quite a title. Um, I'm gonna pray first and then I'll reveal the title and then we'll move on. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've, what you've done and what you're about to do. Lord, teach us, God, today about how men and women can stand together, Lord God, in their uniqueness, in their purpose. Uh, just fill your, fill your, fill your love on us today, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that you permeate the atmosphere. Say only what you want to say. Let Rachel die and Jesus live. Speak to me, speak through me. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys. Um, today's, today's sermon has got a really funny uh, Justin Timberlake-y title. <laughs> it's called, uh, He's Bringing Sexy Back. Yes, you did hear me right. Don't turn it off. It is a Christian sermon. Just let me explain. Uh, I had an argument with the Lord uh, uh, over this title. I'm like, God, are you sure you want me to talk about uh, he's bringing sexy back? Yes, because I want you to talk. She said yes, because I want you to talk about uh, the real, um, the real uh, part of attraction and what you um, and other women look for. I can only speak for myself, so um, I'm going to spend a bit of time doing that um, and then tie it into other women. So, um, what brought this on was I was, I was thinking about, about Reese Witherspoon because, uh, this month, uh, for my, for the book club that I'm a part of, we're reading, uh, Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister. Great book. I would recommend everybody read it. Um, it's con. It's convoluted. It's got murder. It's got like a sneaky husband. It's a great book. But that brought me t- because it was first um, before my book club picked it. The book club that I'm a part of picked it, uh, Reese Witherspoon picked it, and I think that's where my book club leader got it from, because she, she keeps up with who's reading what and whatever for, for our book club, so, and then I kind of looked her up on my Google, and it said that the Sunshine Book Club, which is Reese's book club, uh, specializes in in putting forth women and all that good stuff. And I'm all for female empowerment. It's time that we rise and take our place as women. But saying saying that. Um, I began to think of, uh, women and men and how we just, um, are, are totally, um, fighting, sorry, I was thinking about that, so I was thinking about what kind of books I like, and although, Female empowerment is wonderful. I love books about women 
kicking butt and taking names and doing things for themselves. Of course, I am a woman. I love to read about that stuff. But I begin to think of um, what were, like, the question that popped in my mind is, like, were we designed as women and men to do it alone? And then I started to think about the place of women and men together. And I think, and I think although I enjoy a female empowerment thing, but what really gets my blood going is um, when, when I see characters of women and men working together being boss. So nobody's lording it over another person like I'm not lording it over you because I'm a man or I know better and you're just a little woman I'm like I'm we're standing together side by side and uh being boss and taking names I think we've created a society where kind of women and men are fighting against each other instead of working together. And I think if we can uh, do, uh, if we can celebrate our strengths as women and men, instead of saying um, men are from Mars, women are from Venus, women, are better than men and, and or men are better than women. See, I don't think God designed us to compete with each other. He designed us to complement each other. I'll say that again. God never designed us to compete with each other, but to complement each other. And I think in the generations, we've misunderstood the whole women and men hierarchy. Um, When God created men and women, uh, a man in the garden and and created, created everything and put his breath in man, and then from and then decided it was not good for a man to be alone, so he created a woman. He didn't create a man and a woman to compete with each other, and he didn't think that women are better than men. He just wanted us, he wanted uh, the man to cover the woman, and then when he covers the woman, the woman covers, the woman uh, brings that covering down to the children. So what I think is the God covers the man and the man covers the woman and the woman covers the children and creates the family. But we 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 as women have had generations <clears throat> of suppression that we say we're the man, we're the boss, we're the whatever, and and through the generations that got screwed up and men started uh, being like I'm the man, I'm the boss. It wasn't about covering. It was about suppression, and in in the I think it was the uh, late nineteenth century, women began to say, "Hell no, we have a voice. We can stand up. We can do our thing." And I think even in society today, instead of uh, respecting women, letting her 
be in her light, society is still trying to suppress women. women. And I'll tell you this man as a woman. There is nothing, nothing greater for me than a secure man that lets his wife or his fiance or his girlfriend do her thing. Like, and that doesn't take away from his thing. It adds to his thing. See, a lot of men are under the mistaken impression is if they let a woman do her thing, it's going to take away from his thing. But no, if you let her shine in her purpose and do her thing, it's going to, it's going to gentlemen make you look good. <laughs> it's going to um, make her respect you and it's, it's, it's going to just uh, create an uh, even greater thing. So it's, it's not, can I compete against you and get further than you or whatever? It's, can we work together? Like, because she has a mind like you do. She has a heart like you do. She has a spirit like you do. She, she has thoughts. And if you guys can work together, it'll be wonderful. And God never meant for females to be suppressed. God never meant for women to sh shut up or keep quiet. That verse from Paul in the Bible that said women should be quiet in church, it was about women that were talking during the sermon and not listening to the sermon. So that's what Paul meant to say that women should be quiet in church. He didn't mean it for suppression. Paul had a lot of, of people. He, he had Priscilla. He had all of, all of these female, great female ministers. And like before Paul, Jesus had a lot of great females that he worked with. He worked with Mary Magdalene, Mary, his mom, the woman at the well. Um, he just worked with a lot of uh, people, a lot of women. He loves women. And I will say to any man who is trying to suppress a female, um, it, it will make you greater if you add her opinions, add her thoughts to what you're doing because she will only add to it. Um, and the reason, uh, <laughs> the reason uh, I think God is calling this message is he's bringing sexy back. We, we often think of sexiness as a outward thing, as breasts and as butt and as all of that stuff. But sexiness to me is actually when, like, a man is sexy to me when he is walking in his purpose and when he loves God and when he just loves people, loves his family. And uh, me as a w woman, I'll give you a tip for 
uh, me as a me as a woman. Me as a woman, I don't respond well to. Um, I get so many DMs from strange guys that say, uh, "Hey, sexy," or "Hey, gorgeous," or all the all those kind of ridiculous things, and that turns me off. I don't respond well to that. Like it's like. Like they don't care what I do. They just oh, they just like oh, I like your smile and whatever. For me, for me, I would much rather you say, "Hi, Rachel. I really like your sermon, and this is、uh, what I liked about your sermon this way, in this way, in this way." Oh, what kind of music do you like? Um. Uh, do you have brothers and sisters? How long have you been a Christian, or or things like that? More than, oh, you have a wonderful smile, or t- tell me that when we've known each other a bit, when I trust you a bit, when I whatever bit. But when it comes to me, don't start off with that because. I'll tell you right now. If you do that, I just will not answer you. I'm not the kind of woman that、uh, goes for that. Thank you and all that stuff. Nope, nope.、Um, if you want to talk about the Word of God, if you want to talk about the Bible, if you want to talk about music or what I feel about stuff, like for me. A man is most sexy when he's interested in what is going on on my inside, in my brain, and I know that goes counterclockwise to how men are designed. But but the I'm gonna say something here that is that is going to、uh, just be. A bit sound a bit crass, but the boobs can only stay perky for a while, and the butt will sag, but the brain will last forever. And I think if if、um, the real sexiness of of a person actually comes from the inside. And I know we say that, but we don't really believe that. So you have women and men and partners getting into a relationship, having like giving themselves away too e- too early and too e- easily sleep sleeping with each other, and then they're both one of them is hers and whatever. But I think we just need to turn it around a bit, and I think God wants us to work together as women and men. Like,、um, I heard something interesting. Like, we always talk about being an independent woman, not needing a man to buy anything for us, and that's true. That's wonderful. But at the same time, we do need each other. We do need each other, and you can have your independence, but have a man or woman by your side. Like just because you have a man by your side, or just because you want a man by your side, doesn't mean that you're like less than or needy or whatever. It's just because、oh, we are designed to be together. Now, if you're depending on him to、uh, provide you with so, to provide you with this and provide you with that, that's one thing. But if you're just,、uh, you can have a strong man by your side and still be independent. They don't. Independence 
doesn't mean you stand alone. Independence, it's actually, for me, it's not an independent woman. It's like an inter interdependent woman. Like, you can stand on your own. You could you could be a badass if you need to. You can you can kick butt, take names, and still come home and be a wife and be a mom and be a whatever. You you could you can still do that. And like you know, it, like your worth as a person doesn't depend on whether you have a partner or whether you don't. It depends on what's inside of you. The drive and determination that God has given you. So uh, you're not, you you don't need a man because you need to be someone or you don't, or you don't need to be alone to prove how a uh, badass and independent you are. That doesn't make you being alone doesn't make you independent. It just makes you lonely. And if you're assigned to be alone and if you want to be single, that's one thing. If God ordained you to be by yourself, that's wonderful lady walking your purpose be great, but if God has called you to be in a relationship, that's great too, and you can be a strong woman in a relationship, you don't have to be a strong woman and be alone for the rest of your life, and you don't have to be a single woman and be you know, waiting for a man to, for the rest of your life. Whatever place God has put you, be in that place and stand in it. And if you are in a relationship, work together to, to create something greater. So it's not two halves making a whole. It's two whole people coming together with my strengths and your strengths and my weaknesses and your weaknesses and we can work together to create something greater. We can work together to show the glory of God in our marriage and we can we can bring sexy back together. Um, I was listening to uh, my pastor, um, Pastor Stephen Furtick, talk about his wife, <laughs> and it it was re- like he was talking about. She was talking about how 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 much less she felt because she couldn't do her son's laundry and he was saying uh would you um that he thought it was pretty great that she got up for for work instead of staying home to do her son's laundry and how he talks about this woman it's like she hung the moon it's it's really gorgeous to see it and like it was just, it's just so awesome to me when I see a secure man let his wife be who she is and knowing that it doesn't take away from who he is as a man if you let her be who she is as a woman. It actually adds to you. As a man, if you let your wife be who she is as a woman, it doesn't take away from who you are as a man. It actually adds to you. 
And I think that um, too many men for too, too long have felt like if I let her be who she is, I may not, like, she may be better than me. And she may be better than you at some stuff because her talents may be there and yours not, may not be, but it, but it doesn't take away from who you are. It actually adds to who you are. A great, a great uh, example of this is uh, Pastor Pastor Cheryl and Bishop Jody Brick, Bishop Joey Brady. I love to see this couple. Oh, they're just amazing. How she, how he, he just stands her, stands there and watches her preach, and he just is her number one cheerleader. He's the first one standing up. He assists her in ministry, and it is just wonderful. This is how a woman and a man can work together. So her being great doesn't take away from who she is. And let me say this to a uh, woman, if, if you're fighting uh, with men uh, to be who you are, um, in an aggressive way and try, trying to get there aggressively, aggressiveness is not the way to do it. Aggressiveness will just make you seem like an angry woman. Aggressiveness will just make you tired. But assertiveness, really stating who you are and being assured, um, being assured of who you are without being mean and being nasty. A woman doesn't have to be mean and be nasty to be heard. A woman doesn't have to connive and scheme to be heard. She just needs to walk in the assuredness that God has made her who, who he has made her. And I think that um, you either get the dealing with suppression, you either get the woman who's timid and is afraid to say anything, or you get the woman who's aggressive and feels like she has to fight for everything. And both those, both those um, extremes have their problems. I believe that a woman should state what she wants and know who she is without being aggressive. And I think there's a way to be assertive and not aggressive. Being assertive is to state what you want and what you feel you deserve. And while being aggressive is fighting and bullying people, God has not called women or men to be aggressive. He's called us to be assertive and know who we are and to stand in that truth and to not apologize for it. Don't be sorry about who he's made you to be. Be unapologetic about it. But still be compassionate and be kind. You don't need to bully or put other women down to make yourself get there. You will get to where God wants you to be if you just stay the course. If you just stay the course and listen to his voice, women, you will get to where God wants you to be. And um, yes, he's, um, and I, where the title come, came from is 
I w was thinking about this, um, thinking about this um, uh, thing that I saw about my pastor and his wife uh, and how he was praising her for getting up for work and just praising her for doing her thing. And I, and I found myself thinking, man, that's so, that's so sexy to know that they've been married for 20 years and he still uh, praises her for what she does. Man, that, and I was like, man, that's so sexy. So, and then you guys know me in music. So I, I love music. So, and every time I, I, uh, feel something, uh, significant, a song comes, comes to me. So this song that came to me was like, you're pretty sexy back by Justin Timberlake thinking about how he looks at his wife, how he praises her, how he lets her be who she is. And it doesn't take away from who he is. It just makes him better. And there's there's been too many insecure men who've who've who uh, need to feel needed. Yes, we all need to feel needed, but not to the point where you're putting someone else down to make your yourself be greater. I just, I just um, curse the spirit of insecurity in a man, and I, I just declare that he'll rise up and be who God has called him to be, and stick and be able to stand by her side and cover and cover her as God has intended. And when I say cover her, I don't mean that to lord over her. I I mean for him to say when she's tired, baby, I got this. Baby, you can take a nap. I I declare that husbands will begin to see even when their wives are strong-willed where they can just step up and be her support be her covering, make things easy for her. I declare that husbands will um, be able to see through this message how they can be a help to their wives and and uh, just, just celebrate them. And if there are areas where he's even su subliminal, not only putting her down, I declare that he will fix those areas in the name of Jesus. Um, this is just, it is just so amazing what God has said in this thing today. I just love it. And yes, I believe he is bringing the sexiness back to your marriage and relationship. And I believe that if you celebrate her, oh my gosh, it will just turn your marriage around. If you begin to, I'm not married, but I'm just saying what the Lord is saying. If we begin to, to not, not fight against each other, but fight for each other as men and women. This thing will turn around, and the sexy, and the sexy will come back to our relationships. Um, and if you're not in a relationship, 
begin to celebrate yourself and what you bring. And you don't have to wait to be married to be a person. You just have to know that you're okay in yourself and begin to work on yourself. Singleness is not a holding pattern. Singleness is is um, not a state that I'm waiting to be married. You don't have to wait to be married. Go after what God has purposed you to do. And if he comes along, when, you, when he comes along, you'll be prepared to be a wife. You don't have to wait to be a wife. Just keep walking in your purpose and whatever he's called you to do. Just keep real estating, just keep teaching, just keep whatever. And if he purposed it, he will have the right per- he will have the right person for you. Um Thank you guys so much for being here today. See you next week. Bye. Remember, we don't fight against each other. We fight with each other against the situation. A lot of people are fighting against each other, like we're each other's enemies. But we have to fight with each other against the situation. So whatever situation is going on, we don't fight against a person but we fight against the situation. And I think if we would fight against the situation and come up with solutions for any situation, the world would be a much better place. It's because we're fighting with each other that we can't get anything done because we're under the mistaken impression that it's that other person where it's not, it's the situation that we have to tackle. If we'd stop fighting with each other and concentrate on finding solutions for the situation, we would solve every problem in this world where, where if, if it's a business relationship, if it's a woman and man relationship, if it's a friendship, if it's a you know, whatever relationship it is. Don't fight against each other. Fight against, fight together against the situation. Because if we fight together against the situation, we can accomplish much more than, than trying to fight alone or trying to fight against each other. That's how to tackle almost all the problems in the world. Don't fight against each other. Fight against a situation for the common good. Like like a family. My former my former pastor used to say a family is people fighting people people fighting together for the good of a, for the good of the whole so i think we need to fight together as a world family fighting for the good of the whole because if you win i win if you lose i lose i think if we adopt that family mentality that it's people working together, fighting for the good of the whole. I think that I know that we will begin to to see 
great things together. So guys, I'm really leaving now. I hope you enjoyed this sermon. Bye. Thanks.